Okay, you guys, so it's story time and I'm on my lunch break, so we're gonna make this quick. So the camera may do a little moving around because I'm making turns and everything else, but my story time today is going to be about my daughter and the day that I had her. Um, those that know me know she is my only biological baby and I was almost 30 when I had her. And when I say almost 30, she was born September 20th. My birthday is October the 15th. So, <laughs> um, but she was pretty much sort of kind of basically planned. Um, I found out I was pregnant by my best friend telling me to go take a pregnancy test because I was pregnant. I was having a lot of pain and a lot of symptoms and blah, blah, blah. So, took a price test at 5 o'clock in the morning, two drops of pee, guess what? We're pregnant. Cool. Okay. So, good pregnancy. I had a great pregnancy, you guys. I only gained like 25 pounds. And I didn't start showing until I was eight months. Like, I was showing, but it was like really noticeable. It was like eight months. Like, I looked like I wore my regular clothes. I never bought maternity clothes. So, the closer it's getting to my due date, nothing's really happening I've dilated here and there but not dilated far enough so the Wednesday before I had her I went to the doctor and they had already confirmed hey we're just gonna induce you on Monday blah 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 we were just going over things I was still only like dilated to like a four or a five so like we're just gonna induce you so Friday was supposed to be my last day at work and I went to work, everything was fine, everything was normal. And then around, I guess like two o'clock, I started having contractions. And they were like 15, 20 minutes apart. They weren't close enough. The hospital already told me not to come until my contractions were seven minutes apart. So I'm at work, writing down my little contractions, writing down my little contractions. And, you know, I decided, you know what? Okay, it's getting kind of close. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave work. I was supposed to get off at six. I got off at five. And my boyfriend's mother worked, we worked at the same place at the time. And she was like, are you okay? I was like, oh, I'm having a couple of contractions. I'm just gonna go home. I worked in one city and lived in another. So basically I drove myself back home 30 minutes <laughs> I cooked and I took a shower because nobody wants to go to the hospital nasty so when I got home I told my boyfriend I was like hey we're probably gonna end up at the hospital tonight my contractions are getting closer and closer you know I you know and everything so finally they get to seven minutes apart taking my shower I've eaten bag was already in the car car seat was already in the car we go see I told you the camera's gonna move do a lot of turning um but we get to the hospital, I'm still only a freaking five. So they were gonna send me home until they realized I was supposed to come back Monday and be induced anyway. So they went ahead and just kept me. And this lady comes in with twins. So they were like, okay, we gotta do her emergency C-section. We can't give you your epidural. So it's like nine o'clock at night. They're coming in, they can't get the vein in my arms. They ended up blowing my vein and I had a bruise from like here to here on my arm. And they got all that making my boyfriend nervous. He was making me nervous. Basically they came in and was like, even when you give you your epidural, you're not having a baby anytime soon. So I sent him home because he was making me nervous. They were making him mad by not being able to get my, fink, my IVs and stuff together. So he, I sent him back home. And they came in and they gave me my epidural about midnight. Mind you, I'm dealing with contractions every five to seven minutes. <laughs> but I was I was a G about it. I was a G, y'all. I was a G. So they come in and give my epidural. I'm trying to sleep. Anybody who's ever been in labor for an extended period of time knows that trying to get sleep does not work. They're coming in there every hour turning me my baby she didn't like the monitor that was wrapped around my waist to check her heart rate so they were like we're gonna have to put something in there on her head i was like no you're not y'all are just gonna keep coming in here and i'm gonna turn or something or something's gonna have to do because you're not putting anything on my baby's head I'm like no so finally got that straightened out 
So I don't get any sleep. So roll around to the next morning. I'm at a six at like six o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, really? They had, Jada wasn't doing well with the Pitocin. She didn't like it. Like when they would give me the Pitocin, it would slow her down. So when they took it off, it kind of sped things up. So it, here's 10, 15, 10, 20. Okay, we're almost ready to push. I was like, hold on, daddy's not here yet. He was on his way, but he was coming. So we're waiting on him. Finally, he gets there. It's push time, guys. I'm excited, right? We're pushing. Oh, she's got a lot of hair. Oh, look at all this beautiful hair. Is she out? No. The only people in the room with me are the doctors and nurses and my best friend who is a nurse and my boyfriend. I'm pushing for two hours. I'm pushing. Nothing. They've turned down my epidural and all holy heck broke loose because it hurt. I was still a G about it. I hollered a little bit and I cried. Rap fell off my head. I should have had some braids or something, but whatever. First kid didn't know, wasn't thinking. So finally, they come in there and it's like, okay, we are going to have to give you a C-section. I was like, fine, whatever you gotta do, whatever's safest for my baby, whatever I need to do to get her together, you know, to make sure that she's safe for me to deliver her. And so we go in here, we get the doctor, they get the room set up, we have a C-section. I'm strapped down, they're doing everything, they're cutting, they're doing everything, my boyfriend's sitting there, you're doing great baby, you've been doing good, you're doing great, and <laughs> they go to pull her out, she was stuck. <laughs> that was why I was pushing and she wasn't coming out, she was face up instead of face down, and her forehead was stuck, like she had a line, like a do-rag line across her forehead. Finally, at 1.23, on September 20th, I had a beautiful baby girl they bought her over to me after they cleaned her up she was so beautiful y'all i just started crying because i couldn't hold her i'm still strapped down because i'm having the c-section so they whisk her out make daddy leave out and they're you know trying to sew me up and everything then they're whispering call the doctor call the doctor and i'm like what's wrong they're like does she have anything has she was there any sister or anything i'm trying to say no there wasn't they're not listening to me at all they're trying to call my freaking doctor who wasn't even here the midwife and another doctor actually delivered my baby so finally I get him on the phone no it's not any kind of cyst or anything like that i had a blood clot but they were not listening to me like i'm steady telling them no i didn't have any cysts no i haven't had any complications none of that they weren't listening to me they finally got that so they figured that out got the blood clot fixed up got everything taken care of here comes this nurse her father wants to feed her mind you i'm irritated i've been in labor for 23 and a half hours i've had a c-section i've been cut open from side to side and you're telling me that her father who's been here the whole time so obviously we're on good terms because he's here wants to feed her and y'all are coming to ask me instead of just feeding my child bro no but whatever they fed my child so finally got everything taken care of they start stapling me up the first staple i felt it i said i feel that second staple i really feel that never knew the anesthesiologist was back here because i can't see anything hold on sweetie i got you he hit me once i still felt it hit me twice i didn't feel jack so they stapled me back up took me to my room and I got to hold my baby, you guys. I was such a punk about it. I'm not even gonna lie, I was a punk. I just cried and cried and cried and I just held her. Oh, I just held her and I just cried. And it was the most overwhelming experience I have ever had in my life. Like, it, I just had so many emotions going through me and then I'm holding her and I'm looking at her and I'm like I gotta take care of my baby but it was would I do it all over again yes I would would I make sure that the staff listens to me more yes I would because it's some more stuff that happened this may end up being a story time part two because some more stuff happened after I actually delivered her while we were there but it was amazing it was beautiful and i know you guys are waiting on me to tell you my favorite color if you've been watching the other videos so my favorite color is pink my delivery bag for my daughter that i packed was pink so pink is my favorite color 
But this is a story time I've been thinking about telling because my daughter, my whole pregnancy, the whole thing was, even though the complications with the delivery and me irritated with the hospital, it was a beautiful experience. And even with the C-section, like I was okay. Like I got out of the hospital that Tuesday and they took my staples out that Friday. Once they took my staples out, I was good. I went back to work after four weeks. Um, but yeah, overall my C-section experience with actually recovery and everything was great. I didn't really have any issues. Um, I didn't really take the pain medication till at night. I'm not big on pain medication like that. So I really didn't take it till at night um, when I was trying to sleep. And yeah, once I took my staples out and I could stand up <laughs> again, <laughs> I was great y'all. So um, yeah, let me know down below if you wanna hear part two to hear about the rest of the foolishness that I had to deal with um, in the hospital. But regardless of that, I have a beautiful four-year-old daughter. You guys, if you've been on my channel long enough, you've seen her in and out, you know, in a couple things. I don't really like showing her. I'm really protective of my kids, my biological and non-biological children. I'm very protective over them. So I don't really make videos a lot with them in my YouTube. Like there's pictures on my Facebook, of course. And I have a couple of pictures on my Instagram. Um, but I'm real skeptical about putting them on YouTube, you know, because there's, there's sickos out here. I mean, we all know what was just going on with YouTube, um, a couple of weeks ago where they were having an issue with the comments because pedophiles were using the comments, you know, um, to signal people to certain videos. So I'm really skeptical about that. Um, and also turn your notifications on because we're going to be doing our giveaway video, um, if I don't do it today, I will do it tomorrow and post it because I want to show you guys what is going to be given away, of course. Um, and to get an extra entry in the giveaway, you have to watch um, the ladies' links that are down below. You have to watch their videos and tell me their favorite colors. Even if the favorite color is repeated, like if pink is on there three times, I want to see pink three times. Um, and DM me on my IG, which is down below and you will get an extra entry into the giveaway. And then tomorrow I will explain to you how to get the original entries for the giveaway during the giveaway video. And I'm really excited, you guys, because this is my first giveaway. This is my giveaway for reaching 100 subscribers. So this giveaway is for you. Thank you, because without you, I wouldn't be doing this. So I appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, favorite color is pink, remember that. Um, and this is the end of my story time. Like I said, if you want to hear the second part of how the rest of it went down at the hospital, um, just let me know below and I'll uh, probably end up doing a part two if enough people want to. Or if one day I'm bored and I just feel like it, maybe I will. Or maybe I'll do it on um, like a YouTube live, maybe. So let me know down below if you'd rather watch it live or would you rather me just record it and upload it. So appreciate you guys so much. A million thanks for the 100 subscribers. And I know that's small to some people, but it's big to me. So kudos to you.